Well, praise the Lord. Sanctuary of praise. And anyone else maybe watching today on our social media account, we are so glad that you're with us. And we are going into Lesson 5 in our Discipleship Series. Now, starting this week and probably for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be borrowing some material, um, taking the base of the material and then building on that from a, a, a Bible study put together by uh, Pastor Mark Brown from South Dakota. Been in our district many times. We're so thankful for his apostolic voice in this generation. And he did some Bible studies that he put onto stickers. And these stickers were designed to go into your Bible. I have them in mine here in the front, a couple of pages, and then one in the back. And uh, these are amazing resources. If you don't have a copy of these, I'd be glad to help you obtain a copy. I have a few of these on hand here at the church. But today in Lesson 5, we're going to be talking about essential habits that grow healthy Christians. Now last week we talked about how to continue on. Now we're going to kind of talking about the grounding process and how you put your anchor down and how you uh, get a firm foundation that you cannot be moved. And these are some steps that are basic. We mention them individually by name. But corporately put together and lived out in our lives every day, they will be effective and help us go on for Christ and never fail. So today, as we talk about essential habits that grow healthy Christians, we're going to deal with daily prayer. Daily prayer. Now what is prayer? Prayer is communication in relationship with God. In Luke 11 and verse 1, after the disciples had been observing Jesus going away to pray, they approached him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. John taught his disciples, we've observed you pray many times. We want to know more about it, and we want to learn how to do it for ourselves. He did teach them. If you continue to read in Luke 11, you will find that he gave them an outline of how they could structure their prayer and be effective. We'll, we'll deal with some of that as we go. However, the greatest understanding that we need to have concerning prayer is this. Talk with God daily as you would talk to any other person. We need to understand that this is what the Lord desires from us. He wants this from us. In Matthew 6 and verse 7, Jesus told his disciples, When you pray, use not vain or empty repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. We don't want to just speak a bunch of empty words. We want to have a heartfelt conversation with the Lord. That's very important. 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says, We can cast all of our care upon Him. Why? Because He cares for us. Thank God for that. That speaks of something that's very personal. That's not vain. That's not empty. That speaks about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't have to put on a show with Him in prayer. He just wants us to be real with Him. We have to understand this about prayer. Prayer will not come easy. You have to make time for prayer. You have to eliminate distractions when you pray. You have to be able to focus because your mind will run wild. Your flesh does not want you to pray. One practice that might help you um, to remain focused in your prayer time is to pray out loud. It could be that music helps you to focus. If so, play some worshipful music, but be sure you're praying and not just singing along with the songs. Prayer is just like anything else we do in life. Practice makes perfect. You've got to find out what works for you. Just because it works for me does not mean it'll work for you. And so you've got to make it very personal. And you've got to practice it. See what's effective for you and then apply it. Because the more we do something, the better we'll be at it. Because we have practiced and developed a certain skill and prayer is no different. Make prayer a daily habit. Yes, I said habit. Train your mind. Train your flesh. Train your schedule, so to speak. Make prayer a priority. It's important. 
It will not always be comfortable to pray. It's not always going to be convenient to pray. But if we will remain consistent and develop a habit of prayer, it will become a part of who we are. Now understand this. The deeper things of God are found in extended prayer times. The longer you spend with somebody, the more you get to know them. So we should set a goal to gradually reach 30 minutes or more of prayer on a daily basis. To do this, it may mean you have to set your clock a little bit earlier. Get up an hour earlier. Get your coffee made. Maybe start the laundry. Uh, drink a few cups of coffee. Get yourself awake. Get a shower. Get ready for your day. But whatever you have to do, get up a little early to make time to spend an undistracted amount of time with God in prayer. It's very important if you're going to have successful devotion with God. Now, Scripture tells us we should pray without ceasing. Another place, it said to pray always. We should always be prayerful. But this does not replace a time that we get away from all of the noise and busyness of life to spend time with God in prayer. You have to understand that. I, I personally think that we should pray in the mornings. And there's scripture to back that up. Scripture mentions this practice. Also, the Lord gave his disciples a blueprint for prayer. And he said this in Luke 11 and 3. He said, pray this way. Give us day by day our daily bread. This indicates praying for that day's provision before the day has started, not when the day is done. Pray for the day that lies ahead of you. We pray early, and when we do, we put God in His rightful place in our lives, which is in control of all that we do. Remember earlier we said that the disciples observe Jesus' prayer life, and from that observation, they wanted to learn how to pray. Here was an observation that Mark made about Jesus' prayer life. It was an example. Mark 1 and 35, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out, departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. He got up early, before the day started, before the day's demands came knocking on his door, before anyone else was awake, he got up and he separated himself in a solitary place. And he began to pray. He started his day with prayer. I want to say it again. It's important to talk to God, first thing. It's important to talk to God before we talk to people. It's important to talk to God before we make plans and before we make decisions. Now, life has the way of throwing us curveballs. And so... That there may be some days there are things outside of your control that don't allow this practice. But that's got to be the exception and not the rule. Prayer needs to be as consistent as it can in our lives if it is going to be effective. So when I'm praying, what do I pray about? Philippians 4 and 6 said, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Remember earlier we said the Lord wants us to cast all of our care upon Him because He cares for us. Folks, we are to pray about everything. We're to pray about salvation. We're to pray about health, wealth, emotions, for our family and friends. The Bible says we should even pray for our enemies. And there's several other things that we can mention. But simply said, we should pray about anything. Nothing is off the table with God. If there's something you shouldn't pray about, let Him deal with that. But don't you hold back anything from Him when you talk to Him personally. He cares about your life. He cares about what you care about. He cares about what you're going through and what you're facing. He is a God that loves us. And we can cast all of our care upon Him. Now lastly today, we must understand that prayer is not just a time to offload all of our concerns, fears, and complaints. It's not just a time to get direction 
and to bring our petitions before the Lord and to make intercession. Prayer is all of those things. But prayer is also spiritual warfare. It is a time when the Spirit goes to battle with our flesh. We get a picture of this in the life of Jesus. Matthew 26, 40 through 41. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus told the disciples about the need to pray. He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he talked about how the disciples fell asleep during an hour of prayer. You see, it was through that extended prayer, that hour and maybe longer, that Jesus defeated his sinful, or I'm sorry, his sinless flesh. We must do the same to defeat our sinful flesh. If he had to pray an hour or more to get his flesh in subjection to his spirit, and if his flesh was sinless, how much more ought we to pray more effectually and fervently if we are sinful? It was in this time of prayer that Jesus submitted his flesh to the will of the spirit in the death of the cross, as he said, not my will, but thine be done. Prayer is a time where we open ourselves up not only to hear from God, to submit our mind and our flesh to the very thing that God would have us to do. It's a time we need to hear from heaven, walk in his word and his will. Amen. If we are going to be healthy Christians, then we are going to have to pray daily. Amen. If we're going to be healthy and strong and walk with God and be pleasing to Him and gain strength from Him and direction from Him, then we're going to have to talk to Him. And we've got to allow Him to talk back to us. And we've got to get to know Him in that personal way through prayer. It'll help you to grow. I challenge you today. You're just praying before meals, before you go to bed. Carve out some time in the morning. Start with five minutes. Start with ten minutes. Build to fifteen. Build to twenty. I find sometimes I cannot, I cannot even cover myself and my family within twenty to thirty minutes. It takes me that long to cover everyone. If you'll start praying for everything and, and everyone and anything you can think about, you will find it won't be that hard to find something to pray and to talk to God about. Just pour it all out to Him. But I challenge you today, do not become satisfied in your prayerlessness. Probably not said too grammatically correct. But don't be satisfied with a prayer life that's non-existent. Push yourself to do more. Push yourself to talk to God. He desires it and He wants it from you. And when you do that, you'll find your walk with God will strengthen and you'll begin to grow in Him. He'll begin to talk to you, and he'll begin to use you and bless you. So let's pray together now. Jesus, God, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, Lord, for every instruction we have here and many more about prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the example you gave us in your life about prayer. And I'm asking you, God, to raise up your people, those that are watching now and those that will watch later, raise up this church today, God. I pray sanctuary praise. Let it be a church full of people who have dedicated themselves to daily prayer. I pray, Lord, you draw us closer to you and bring us back to that place where we know you and we talk to you and we lean on you and we trust you. I ask you, Lord, that you would order our steps. Help us, God, to do your will and to follow you faithfully. We thank you today, Lord, for all of your goodness. And we would ask it now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for joining us again today on this Friday morning for a time uh, of studying God's Word together in our discipleship series. We're, we're so thankful to have you with us. Praying for you all. We love you. And uh, we'll see you again next week at the same time for another lesson. God bless you in Jesus' name.